We'll start with a quick review from the end of the assignment from yesterday. You learned about these things called diamond problems, and in a diamond problem, you want two numbers that multiply to the top number that add to the bottom number. And so if we think of factors or things that multiply to 24, that would be 1 and 24, uh, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. So out of these, we want, um, we want the pair that multiply to 24, that add to 10, and that would be 4 and 6. So that's how you do a diamond problem. So again, they must multiply to the top number. In other words, it's called the product. So the product of the two side numbers will be 21, and the sum will be negative 10. So I just like to start by looking at um, factors of 21, what multiplies to 21. 1 and 21, 3 and 7. And then since the top is positive and the bottom is negative, I have to make both numbers negative. And here's the combination that multiplies to a positive 21 that adds to a negative 10. So negative 3 and negative 7 would work in the diamond problem. And then our last one, again, what multiplies to the negative 24, so what's the product? Well, factors of that, that adds to 2. And if I just list factors of 24, 124, 212, 3, 8, 4, 6. Oh, we had these all written down before. And if it multiplies to a negative but adds to a positive, one of my numbers has to be negative. So out of all of these, which one can I make one of the numbers negative? So it adds to a positive 2, but multiplies to a negative 24. And that would be negative 4 and positive 6. So that would be the solution of the last diamond problem. So we'll keep practicing those, and the, the reason is um, we're going to be doing factoring in a few days, and if you can do this, this is actually factoring. All right, so our goal today is use what you know about translating functions to find the vertex of a quadratic, and can you write the equation of a quadratic in vertex form? So we know things about a quadratic. We know that the second difference is the same. We know that if you have x squared as the highest power, it will be a quadratic, which makes your graph a parabola, and it might look something like a smiley face like this, or it might be upside down, look like a frowny face. All right, part one, can you identify the coordinates of the vertex? The vertex is where your graph changes direction. And where it changes direction um, in a quadratic is either going to be the maximum point if it's upside down or the minimum point if it's like a smiley face. Oopsies. All right, so again, here's the parent function y equals x squared, and here the vertex is at 0, 0 for the parent function. If we take a look at the shifted function right here, the vertex is negative 2, 1, because we go left 2 and up 1. So if you remember, we, um, oh, I should write it right here, 0, 0, negative 2, 1. If you remember in the functions unit, we talked about shifting the graph up, down, left, and right, and we wrote something if it was a quadratic in this form, y equals x minus h squared plus k, and we talked about the behavior of k and h. So one of these moves our graph left and right, and one of them moves it up, up and down. So in class, um, there'll be a link to the day four um, vertex form of a quadratic, it, which is links to Desmos. You're going to complete it, and it will go through, like, what's the relationship between h and k and the vertex of the graph. All right, and then at the end of class, we'll summarize what you guys found out. And so just to do a quick example of what you might see in the summary. If we have this function, y equals x minus 4 squared plus 5, how does that shift the graph? And we learned first semester that if it's minus 4 inside the parentheses, this shifts it to the left. Actually, this was to the right. 4, and the plus 5 on the outside, the k value, shifted, shifted your graph up 5. And so the vertex of your graph would be positive 4, positive 5. Another example, and again, we'll just summarize in class. What if you had the graph, and I'll just uh, grab another sheet here, y equals, let's do x plus 3 squared minus 12. And again, playing around with the graphs on Desmos, 
if you forgot, you'll see that this shifts your graph left 3 and down 12. So the vertex will be negative 3, negative 12. And so as we look at more and more of these examples, we can see that that vertex is going to be the opposite of what's inside the parentheses, but it will be the same as what's on the outside. So if we have um, this equation, x minus h squared plus k, we would say that the vertex will be the opposite of the h value but the k value remains the same. And that's the main thing we'll summarize in class, which is if I give you something in vertex form, that you can look at it and really quickly tell me where that graph changes direction.